Hello, everyone. This is another one of our podcasts brought to you by Tercera de Hospitalidad, the consultancy you can trust in. This is the first of a four-part podcast. The purpose of today's presentation is to discuss the recent developments in the public procurement of medicines and health products, especially in the Spanish system, and how Spain has been implementing the central purchasing trend in this sector based on the new public procurement directive. Now, let me begin. I'm going to divide this part into four parts. I'll start by describing the Spanish public procurement legislation. Then I'll move on to a review of the new central purchasing bodies and their idiosyncrasies focusing in their initial tenders announced by the central purchasing bodies of the autonomous communities and by the central purchasing body of the health ministry. Then we'll focus on the regulation that the Spanish government and the autonomous communities have imposed to control expenditures in public procurement. Lastly, I'll quickly recap before cons concluding with some recommendations. Let's start by looking at the issue of Spanish public procurement legislation. There are three main laws that we have to take into consideration. One, Royal Decree 3 slash 2011 the 14th of November, by approving the Consolidated Law on Public Sector Contracts. It has been in force since the 16th of December, 2011. Two, Royal Decree 817-2009, slash the 8th of May, approving the partial development of the Law of Public Sector Contracts. It is applied only if there is no contradiction with the Consolidated Law on Public Sector Contracts. 3. Royal Decree 1098-2011, slash the 12th of October, approving the development of the Law on Public Sector Contracts, as well as the last one, It is applied only if there is no contradiction with the Consolidated Law on Public Sector Contracts. The legislative framework on public contracts and public procurement has been amended frequently. As of 2007, there have been 40 amendments over the last several years. That's why we say it is the motorized legislation, because it never stops. So we need a Consolidated Law on public sector contracts now. There has to be a new culture in public procurement. Maybe we can reach it through the implementation of the fourth generation on the public procurement directive. To make our legal framework even more complicated, we also have 19 autonomous communities, each one with their own regulation in public sector contracts. For example, Aragon has its own law in which we can find a reduction of documentation requirements. This has been achieved in particular through the acceptance of self-declarations, whereby a bidder declares under oath that he fulfills the criteria which are a precondition for tendering. Only the winning bidder will then be obliged to supply the documentary evidence to prove the facts that he declared in his self-declaration. We also have what in the Spanish legislation is called the horizontal laws that regulate the Spanish administrative procedure, Law 30 slash 1992. Due to that, a lot of red tape is required to become a bidder, making it very expensive and very hard for companies to become a bidder. In addition, the Spanish regulation does not refer to the procedure to purchase medicines and medical devices. It is a law that originally was drawn up to select bidders for works, services, and general supplies. So it is very difficult to apply it to the purchase of health products. Okay, that's all folks. Looking forward to bringing you part two of another podcast from Tercera de Hospitalidad.